Greetings and salutations, everybody. I'm going to read to you a book from one of my absolute favorite people on the planet, S.V. Phyllis. I know her as Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Um, a new book called The Prophecy is out, and she wrote it. And I've read from the first book, The Summoning, on here a couple times. So uh, I thought I'd read from the sequel today. Um, if you have Kindle Unlimited, then it's totally free to you right now. Um, and, you know, at that price you can beat it. But uh, it's really, if you pay for it like I did, it's definitely worth your money because uh, Samantha is a fantastic author. Um, she just pulls you into these worlds and you uh, sometimes will hold your breath waiting for the next scene to see what's going to happen next. So, uh, without uh, further ado, I will read to you from The Prophecy by S.P. Phyllis. Chapter 2. Calix moves in... Sorry, let me start that over. Calix moves to kiss my cheek. His lips are warm and soft, despite the dry winter. He leaps up and takes me with him. I shove his chest and sweep at my backside. I chew at the raw skin of my lip to buy time to think of a good insult. Want my help with that? He jokes. I stop wiping and swat him instead. Please don't answer, Onyx says. I peer over at her in the snow trail. Her gloved hands cover Brett's eyes. Brett claws and pulls her vision free with her bare fingers. I'm 13. Brett glares up at her. Yeah, which means you are allowed to watch PG-13, not rated R. And since your sister is, one, is the one doing the dirty by default, I am the parent. Onyx waves her off. My face drops, not in embarrassment, but at the idea of Brett entering her teen years without me. The preceptors haven't changed their heart to allow me to room with my sister or to have any phone contact with between solstices. The six months apart dragging long, dragged long and the worry never truly ebbs. She visits for a short single week for the winter summoning and then she's expected to return to her camp for touch. I need to steal hugs while I can. I missed summer summoning, and I'm curious to witness which descendants will transition into duty. I imagine watching the ceremony as familiar faces are called based on their affinities. I often catch myself scanning my lesson rooms to wager with myself who is next. I imagine their gifts from the angels. Josh is strong in combat, maybe his affinity is in reading fight tactics. Or what about Jen's knack for finding lost items in residence and Sujay's ability to guess the end of a book or a movie? I tend to do that. It's kind of annoying for some people that uh, I'll be sitting in the theater and I'm like, oh, I figured it out. And it'll be like 10 minutes in. Some people want to know and I tell them and then they get to the end of the movie and realize I was 100% spot on right. So I, I try and keep my mouth shut, but most of the time I'm like, oh, <laughs> my God. You know, so I, I understand that trait all too well. The way a bloodline dilutes through generations twists the magic in our blood uniquely to our genetics. Every discovery is celebrated. The formality of the event radiates with honor. Each name called pounds inspiration into our chest, and there's an undeniable pride for gaining a strong prospect to fight for our safety. With Caradoc Car missing and the direct descendant residing here, our camp is hosting again in the hope to summon descendants to jobs in this area. We need the protection. I'm just glad I have more time with Brett. Calix buries his nose in my hair, playfully calling me to his attention, but lifts his face to scowl at Onyx. You know, you were a lot more attractive when you were all quiet and mysterious. This sentimental kissy stuff isn't your style. She 
puts her hands on his lips along with Calix's previous dark eyes and light skin, he acted cool and distant when Onyx and I first arrived at camp. Jealous, are we? He stands straight, keeping an arm around my waist. Nope. She walks away. I came here to call you back to the meeting square. She stops. His voice is rough and sneer casual. I feel his arm tense and watch as he rolls his shoulders back. His stare is devoid of earlier signs of sentiment. Onyx crosses her arms, beckoning him to continue. The preceptors have decided to deploy descendants in towns. We're leaving camp. So if you want to check out more of the prophecy, I suggest you do. It's really an excellent book and it's intriguing. I think it's good for all ages, you know, young adults especially. Um, I tend to like to read all genres. I kind of, I don't really lock myself into one thing. So you can learn something from all kinds of books. And I think the the more you broaden your horizons, the more well-rounded you'll become. And I do endeavor to become a well-rounded person. So I like to read as much as possible from as many genres as possible. Um, that's it for this one. I hope you have a wonderful tea day, and again, if you like something that I'm reading to you, please go ahead and click the link that will be provided. Uh, it is free on Kindle Unlimited if you have that, or you can buy it pretty cheap on Amazon like I did. Uh, wish you a wonderful day, everybody.